Welcome to my parlor. Thank you for joining me today. And as we go through the list of supplies, I would like to mention that this video was started many months ago, but because of computer problems and just life getting in the way, I hope it still flows okay because I had to start over. So thank you for watching and enjoy. What I've decided to do today is I love this area down here for a design. And so I take my paper and you can see I've already started drawing my design because I just wanted to see if it would fit. But I take my paper and I cover the area of the design that I want and I'm going to tape this down. I'm just going to draw the pieces that I find interesting and that I want to have on my design sheet. And then what I'm gonna do, like when we have a big empty space like this, I'm probably going to draw something in there that I'm gonna add later. So go ahead, find a design sheet and draw it out. Now, one of the great things about this is I started down here, but I had a lot of larger open spaces here, and I liked that flower, so I went up there and I spilled, filled that space with the flower. And then I liked that, so I put that up there. So you can move this around, and if you have spaces to fill, you can leave that for your clay, or look, you can go over here and you can put that in there. So you're limited only by your imagination. So just go ahead and put whatever you want on there and or leave the spaces blank and you can fill it in on the clay later. So let's go to the next step. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to put this piece on here. And I'm just going to make sure that I get the parts of the design on here that I think are important and that I want. I want the flower. I want that part. That's not so important. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it like that. And now we're going to use your tape again. So this doesn't slip while you're doing it. And we're gonna tape that down so that doesn't move. Now, we're gonna use a pencil that's not as sharp to start doing this because what you're gonna do now is we're just going to start tracing again. And it's going to be fairly easy to see where you've done the tracing because if I could show you from the side, you're actually going to see from the side that that part is dented in some. And especially since you're using a larger pencil, it's easier to see what you've dented in. Okay. It's time for the great reveal. Yes, even I haven't looked at it. So let's see how that turned out. Oh good. Look, we have a lot of patterns. That's just enough to guide us on what we want to do. So here's what we're gonna do next. I have more scrap clay and actually, I, I made my scrap lighter color just so you can see what I'm going to do on this. Now I have all my goodies. I have my longer and shorter strings. I decided to do some of the really small pin point disc. There is my teardrop with a string of that. And there's my square with that. And I'm going to start laying some pieces in here. Now, what I do is I start with the insides and what I want to do because that's going to guide what I'm going to put on the outside. Now, remember some of these marks we made here? This is exactly what I'm going to do with those. Like here, 
I am going to put a tear a teardrop like that. And remember those lines are just used for guides of what you're going to do because you might decide that you want to do it a little bit differently when it comes right down to it. This was that little bunch of three that I'm going to make a point on the end and run three of these together. And I'm going to run through this rather quickly right now just so you can see what I'm doing. But I decided to make that two instead of three. And I'm going to make a point out of that and I'm going to have a line coming down through here and you might notice the height difference height difference uh, right here with this one and I'm going to talk to you about that in a minute uh, but not right now but there's going to be a, uh, an issue with that so I'm going to have that come down here and don't worry if it's a little crooked because we can smooth all of that out later. I'm going to, for time, just for time's sake right now, I'm going to leave that inside alone. But you get the idea of, of how this is going to work. And uh, I'm going to put a few things on the inside of that leaf there too. But now I'm just going to come up here on the outside of this leaf and where they join, I'm just going to do a nice gradual cut there. And there we have our our first leaf. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit more filling in like I would usually do it. And then I'm going to come back and tell you what I've done. Well, here we are. And now we have done a pretty good amount on this. I have cut my finger and I lost my ring. And oh, look, my shirt has changed color. <laughs> but what have you done? Now, the first thing that I want to say is look at all the different effects that I have done on here. And all I have used to do all of the things that you see here are these pieces of equipment. This is all I've done. The things that I found when I first started making these sheets is I did not leave enough room in a lot of these places. So you want to make sure you leave open areas, not too much. I'm probably going to put another piece there. But don't have areas so close like this that your clay can't get in them or you can't get your clay out. So let's keep filling in your piece. There's one handy little trick I want to show you for making the points of your leaves so that you get a nice point on that. So let me show you something real quick. Is let's go ahead and lay that down here to follow our pattern. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an angled point like that. Now, to get that nice point is you take that point and you just flip it over and voila you have your points I really want to say I'm sorry things happen really really that's me but the video might come off as disjointed unprofessional but I had some long-term and serious health consequences. So let's just jump right in there and get started. So here's where I'm at. Where are you guys at? You might notice a few changes. The first thing is that I added this in a different color. So you could see I did something a little different. Do you remember this that we showed you a little bit ago? Well, here's a way that you can cheat. If you have something like this, and you can take 
a sheet. This is rolled out on the second thickest setting. And then you can use something like this. Uh, spray it first. And stamp on that and then cut it out like I did and put it on there. Now the only reason it works on here when we're talking about design is because we have some swirls over here. Or if I were to finish this, I would probably cut this one out and place part of a one here in the opposite direction, use some of it here. But all by itself, it doesn't really work as a design. So just letting you in on a few uh, cheats and tricks and gotten this finished. And I made a couple things in blue because I wanted to say that I made this out of the stamp that we made before. And that because I added that, I had to add some of the same thing in a few other places for continuity of design. And speaking of that, because I added this leaf over here, I added another leaf down here. And then I had that flat spot there that I had flattened out with the spatula end of this tool. I had just flattened it, but it looked a little bare, so I added some balls there. Now remember, I have these designs here that I cut out. So I added some teardrops here. There's one of the three leaves. Um, there is a piece, a long piece of the square that I cut in half and used. Um, and there's some also pieces from the square. So you can see how we use them all over. And I just used a little round edges that I cut off of the end of this in a lot of places like this. So the original design that we traced on here was this one. And we started down here, and we kind of kept that design, but as usual, eh, nope, yeah, nope. I kind of went way off course, which tends to happen, because I like to just kind of freestyle. But in this one, I left a lot of spaces that were not open enough. So that's why I wanted to make another one with more open spaces. So we're going to bake this one. Okay, my friends, this one is going to be short, sweet, and hard to beat because it doesn't need much explaining. What we have here is some pieces of scrap clay that I rolled out and uh, baked. I made one real big and also kind of thin. I think this was on setting number three on my atlas. Uh, sometimes you want a bigger sheet and sometimes you want it to be nice and flexible because oftentimes uh, this is just a little too thick. So I try to make them thin. There's a couple ways you can do this. The first one is that you can take our handy little, little dandy drawing that we did earlier from the adult coloring book page and you can use your carbon paper and you can draw it on here or you can just freestyle it. But I want to show you a piece that I did freestyle. Or rather I should have said pieces because I'm obsessed with texture sheets. This is a sheet that I did freestyle with just uh, the round ones. And I just was looking for the waves and the little spirals in here. So that was a quick and dirty one. I think it's best when you do it to do it on a piece of raw clay so that you don't have to use your liquid clay or your bacon bond on this. But I had these made up. I had space, but I didn't have time to make them. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So this one I just freehanded. Here's another one I freehanded. I just wanted circles and dots. And as you can see, I shaved uh, and sanded some of those dots down. So again, they're not all the same height. But the nice thing about this is after I did this, then I took some more scrap clay and I pressed that into it and I have two molds and you can do this with it with any of these and here's another freeform one that 
I don't know, got kind of weird, I guess. It's not big enough for most things, but, uh, but hey, it works. So, you're equipped to do this. You have an extruder. You probably have scrap clay. And if that's what you want to do, you got lots of things to do it with. And we're back, but I'm hiding the final result of some of the sheets that I've shown you. And I went to my veneer shelf. And yes, I have a shelf of veneers. I posted that once and somebody said, what? You got a shelf of veneers? And I was like, you mean you don't? So you're going to quickly see which one is my favorite one. This was actually used in one of my tutorials. And this is a Makumigane using this one. And here is Scylla's golden pendant that was made with this sheet. The next sheet you're going to recognize too, just because I just showed it to you. And that kind of shows you the different effect that you can get with the two different molds of the same sheet. And you can also see that I've typed a couple pendants out of there, but you get a very different effect with the different sheets. Surprised, right? Now again, this was a Makumigani. This one's pieced together. This is pieces and ends. And of course I did the, geez, I can't remember what tutorial that was from, but it's the same thing. And this one was used, oh, I think it was a combination of them. But that's a couple of my sheets, veneers that I have available. And as I show you these pieces, you're going to also quickly see, which is my favorite one that I use. This was uh, alcohol inks on a foil sheet uh, using different colors. And just can see how versatile it is. You can pick and choose the areas that you want to use. And you get these wonderful results. That's the end of today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And as always, please ask any questions or make any comments. And I will be glad to answer them for you. Thank you for joining me. And I hope you visit my parlor again.